Hey, thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. You know, it was about four or five years ago that the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources started something really cool here in our state. It's called the Wildlife Migration Initiative. The idea is to track wild animals in their natural habitat. It allows biologists to study these animals better, which enables them to manage them better. Part of that program is happening today here in Rich County. So today we're catching uh, deer. We're, gonna get, we're catching some deer that have been collared already, and then we're going to catch some new deer. So we're, we're looking at several different things with the deer today. Utah is home to abundant wildlife populations. However, for many species, including deer, we know little, if anything, about how these animals move within and between habitats that are vital to their survival. Utah's Wildlife Migration Initiative was created to document, preserve, and enhance the movement of wildlife throughout Utah. The initiative uses state-of-the-art GPS tracking technology to monitor many species and document their movements in near real time. Information generated by tracking callers is used to define critical habitats for species, including migration corridors that link essential seasonal ranges. Technology has really allowed you guys to initiate a program like this and, and be more productive at it. Yeah, it's it's been a real game changer for us. It's you go back even five years and the GPS colors that they had now, like they didn't have the satellite upload links, they were really expensive. Some you'd have to download remotely with an antenna and go find an animal, or you had to wait till the collar dropped off. Now we get real time data, what's happening on the ground, when those deer are moving. It's really made a big difference for us. Making you guys better biologists. Yeah, for sure. Generally two at a time. And then we'll just process them. We'll get them on stretchers, bring them in. We'll first weigh them. 52. And that goes into our body condition score that we give them. And then we'll put them on the table and get them a collar. And Eric, do you think that needs to be tighter? Someone will be using ultrasound, you'll see. Check for pregnancy first. And then they'll take like a, a rump, look at the rump fat on it and a loin thickness. And then they give them a body condition score. Um, and that all goes into telling us a total amount of body fat that they have. Is she pregnant? Yes, she was. This all goes in the migration initiative. What we've seen this year, the deer are fatter than they've been, and this is like on the cash, one of the fattest years they've had in years. Um, and that's pretty common throughout the state we've had. It's been, it was a good year. So I'm working on my master's degree at BYU. I'm a graduate student. Oh, geez, ask the short girl. 53. We're looking uh, to evaluate the influence of maternal effects on fawn survival. So that basically means like if you've got a fat mom, are you going to survive better? Yeah, we're pregnant. So we test for pregnancy and then we put in, uh, it's called a vaginal implant transmitter. <laughs> so when she gives birth, that transmitter will come out. 044053. And it actually is linked to her GPS caller so they can communicate and it will send us an email when she gives birth and just hike right in there and find the fawn. 2018, we only had one fawn survive out of the 50, which was a rough year, but a lot of that had to do with a dry summer and then a hard winter. Mm -hmm. 2019 was a little bit better. Um, right now, we're sitting at 30% survival for those fawns. But definitely the wetter summer in 2019, um, followed by this has been a relatively mild winter for the caches, helped the fawns survive significantly. Just within the last 10 years or so, the GPS collars have become affordable enough and the technology is good enough now to where these animals that we're catching and putting these collars on are going to take a location every two hours. Uh, absolutely groundbreaking, cutting edge. Uh, we, we're now in an era of big data where the stuff we could only think about doing 10 years ago is now possible. And thanks to the huge efforts of this big collaborative group, uh, sportsmen's groups, SFW, Mule Deer Foundation, uh, State of Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, the federal agencies, We've just got a great team right now working on conservation in the 21st century with all the latest and greatest technology. Well, you know, while a lot of the legwork happens here in the mountains with biologists and even these grad students, the more interesting stuff actually happens back at DWR headquarters when biologists crunch the numbers. This is a project that we're really excited about. It's a website um, for our, our wildlife migration initiative. So Adam, that, that project was started back in 2017 um, to help us document wildlife movement and wildlife migration in the state of Utah. And now uh, a big focus of that effort is to collect um, tracking data on wildlife. The Wildlife Migration Initiative focuses on many big game species in Utah, but also includes fish, amphibians, birds, and even bats. 
A lot of what we're doing is mule deer across the state of Utah. So we have GPS tracking collars in 20 of our herd units right now. And we find that when we get G tracking collars on deer, we find that they're doing stuff a lot of times we didn't know they were doing. One of the interesting things that we found was um, up here in the northeastern part of the state by Flaming Gorge. We have deer that, that migrate from the, that far northeastern corner of the state uh, into Wyoming and they actually go across Flaming Gorge Reservoir. They swim the reservoir and then they go and spend the, their summer in Wyoming. A lot of what we thought was happening was a north-south migration. So deer summering on the Uintas and then moving north into Wyoming for the winter, kind of moving downhill. Um, but what we're finding is a lot of these deer are moving east-west across the Uintas. Yeah. So that was something we didn't expect. So why is tracking an animal important? Well, the tracking information is used to study animals' habitat use, migration corridors and barriers that might impede their movement. State and federal agencies use this information to make important planning decisions that can impact wildlife. This is a huge success story for Utah. So this is our, our Ponsagant herd down in southern Utah, down by Kanab. In the 2000s, this was a really bad deer vehicle collision area. So tons of deer were getting hit on the stretch of 89. Uh, Department of Transportation knew they needed to do something about it. Conservation groups like Sportsmen for Fish and Wildlife, the Mule Deer Foundation, Department of Transportation, Division of Wildlife all worked together to get a series of wildlife crossings in this area. So there's, there's 13 miles of, of wildlife fencing in this area to keep the animals off the highway, make it safe. And then there's, there's seven wildlife crossings that funnel the deer under the, under the road. And these are some of the most used crossings in the whole country. The fence and crossings were put up before the migration initiative. Now that they have collars on deer migrating under Highway 89, they can now see that they still have some fencing and some work that needs to be done. What we found is like there's a major migration corridor in Johnson Canyon, which mm -hmm. you, you know about, and they're coming across the highway right here at Johnson Canyon and there's no wildlife fencing or crossings there. So this is this type of information is what we're working with Department of Transportation to say, hey, look, we did a great job solving the problem here. We still have one area that probably needs addressed right here at Johnson Canyon. But this tracking data helps us identify the movement corridors they use to move between these really important ranges. And then once we know that, we have a targeted location to work with, with other agencies and other groups to help make sure, make sure those corridors stay open. Um, because we're not going to have 350,000 mule deer if, if they're cut off from their winter ranges or they can't get to their summer ranges. It's got to be kind of cool too to see some of these younger kids, these up and coming biologists and how energetic they are. It is. I, I was in their place not too long ago. You know, it's a great experience. You get to see hands on. Okay. That's interesting stuff to me. I figure if it's interested, if I'm interested in it, then the, the public obviously oh, is. Too. We've had great feedback from the public. I think it's really cool. Uh, the public's able to see this information that we're get, getting from these callers. Yeah, on your guys' website. Right, you check that out on the new on the new website that they just put out for the Wildlife Migration Initiative. Cool. Well, thanks for having us out, Dave. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for coming. It's interesting. It is a really cool thing to do. All right. Hey, I'm Adam Nicole, KSL Outdoors. Remind you to get out, learn a few things about wildlife, get outdoors, make some memories with your family and friends. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.